Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. For today's video, I don't know how to intro this quite yet because I haven't chosen a title, but essentially I wanted to talk about the beauty industry in 2022 and 2022. That's going to be a problem all year. And trends that I would love to see start or change in the new year, things that I would love to see go away forever in the new year, and also include some of your guys' opinions as well, because I did ask you guys over on Instagram what you would love to see start and stop in beauty in 2022. So shout out to my sister Emily for giving me this video idea. I thought that it would be a fun one, a little bit more of a laid back commentary style video, and I would love to make it an open conversation. So as I talk about these topics, sound off in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this as well. So if you would like to hear my thoughts on general beauty, hair care, skin care, and makeup trends in 2022, the direction I would like to see them go, plus your guys' thoughts as well, which I will share at the end of this video, you've come to the right spot. We're going to jump into that in a second. But before we do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell, and drop a comment below letting me know what your thoughts are on 2022 beauty. Beauty. What do you want to see start? What do you want to see stop? Let me know. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm, so I appreciate you so much. And if you need anything from me at all, it's always listed in my description box below, including Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, which I am rocking right now, discount codes, timestamps, and links to my favorite products of all time, plus any products that I may reference in this video. I already can't remember if I do. I'm sure I obviously do. This is a beauty video. What am I talking about? Okay, let's jump into it. Let's kick off this video with a couple of more general beauty trends that I don't like. The first is clean beauty. I have been hinting at the fact that I can't stand clean beauty for a while now. I did post a video recently where I told you guys that I plan to make an entire clean beauty video. The reason why I say that is because I feel like there's little topics that I need to tackle first that fall within clean beauty to kind of build a foundation for that video. You know what I mean? So for example, the video that I posted recently was all about sulfates. That is a hefty topic. It needed an entire video to really, really give it a fair explanation, if you will. So I'm going to list that below if you haven't seen that yet. The clean beauty video will be coming this year, but before we get to that bigger video, if I could just sum up my issue with clean beauty as a trend for the sake of this video, it would be that I feel like it encourages consumers to discontinue use of products or ingredients based on fears. I really feel like this is a trend that was built on and continues to grow on valuing fears and emotions over logic and fact. And that might be a hot take to hear for some, but I really do think it's a problem and I just don't love the direction the beauty industry is going with clean beauty at the forefront. It feels a little scary. I'm scared. So for that reason, I'd love to kick clean beauty to the curb in 2022, but I don't know if this is ever gonna go away. I don't know, I feel like it's always gonna be there in some way. What do you guys think about clean beauty? Where do you think it's headed this year? and in the future. The second general beauty trend that I do not want to see this year is the one size fits all approach for ingredients, whether that be hair care, skin care, makeup. The idea that a product is bad for everybody because it has one single ingredient on the label, it's not it. And this is definitely something that comes into play with clean beauty. I touched on it in that video where I talk about sulfates, but I also think it's just more of a general problem integrated with but also separate from clean beauty but i'm not gonna act like i'm above this or haven't fallen victim to this because i definitely did in the past i used to scrutinize ingredients lists if i saw something i didn't like i'd be like mm, nope not gonna use it not gonna recommend it but my opinion on that has definitely evolved over time and i really try to look at a combination of experts or look to a combination of experts i should say to form I don't even want to say opinions, but just to understand the facts about ingredients. So I love to get advice from cosmetic chemists and formulators, scientists, dermatologists, other medical experts like that. And it's interesting because they won't always say the same thing. So I think it's just important to take what you hear on the internet, regardless of who it's from, with a grain of salt, but knowing that there are certain people that are absolutely more of an authority in certain areas than others. So something that I've been saying for a while that I'll continue to reiterate as it relates to this topic is that the amount of that ingredient, the ingredient that we're choosing to demonize, let's say sulfates, 
and the rest of the formula is what is most important and also how that product works for your own personal unique skin or hair. Those things are all much more important than just the presence of that ingredient on a label. That's not enough to tell us whether a product is good or bad, especially when it comes to more than just ourselves. You know, you can't say that something is bad so no one can use it because it has one ingredient, you know? And that's something that I have definitely tried to move away from over the past year and will continue to do in 2022. For those of you wondering if that means my opinion on fragrances and essential oils has changed, I would say from a couple of years ago when I was like, avoid, 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 so bad. Yes, absolutely. But I still am somebody with incredibly sensitive skin <gasps> that is just very reactive. And I have personally found that heavily fragranced products tend to irritate my skin. So I'm going to list a video below where I talk about that more in depth. It's my two and a half year tretinoin update. Hopefully that clears up any questions you may have on my plans with fragrance now and in the future. All right, let's start off with skincare specific trends and sunscreen at that. So the first thing that I would love to see change in 2022 is shade rate expansion for tinted sunscreens. Still to this day, it is the norm to see a tinted sunscreen with only one shade, maybe up to four shades, but four is typically a lot for a tinted sunscreen. And that's just a huge problem because that obviously leaves out so, so many skin tones. So a brand that I feel has actually stepped in the right direction with this last year was Tower 28. They launched actually pretty recently their Sunny Days Tinted Sunscreen. It's an SPF 30. I have an entire wear test video on that that I will list below. They have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they have 14 different shades in this tinted sunscreen, which is definitely rare to see. So that is exciting. Again, a step in the right direction. I am really hoping that other brands follow their lead here because just because a product is light coverage doesn't mean that, hmm, if I have warm toned skin with yellow undertones, that a cool toned product with pink undertones is going to look right on my skin. I don't understand the logic there. If there's a little bit of coverage and color, you can see that it doesn't match, you know? So not only do we need better undertone representation, of course, we need darker representation and a lot of times lighter skin representation too. There are so many tinted sunscreens that I can't use at all when I don't have a self tan on for my natural skin tone. They're way too dark and way too orange. So let's expand the shade love for tinted sunscreens because I love a tinted sunscreen. Speaking of tinted sunscreens and the problems that I have with them, I know I'm a little bit biased here because I have skin that leans oily, but I feel like that's also allowed me to identify a white space opportunity for most skincare brands. And that is offering tinted sunscreens that do not look like a wet mess on oily skin by the end of the day. I feel like the default for a tinted sunscreen is overly dewy, to the point in a lot of cases of looking really, really shiny and wet and greasy. And it's just so gross if you have oily skin. So that's not for every brand. Of course, there are some brands that do it pretty well, but I feel like the sunscreens that are out there, we're talking tinted, of course, because this is not a problem with untinted sunscreens, but well, some are still greasy, but not in the same way. When it comes to the tinted sunscreens that do cater more towards oily skin, I feel like they look so, so dry and flat and I don't love that look either. Or, and or, they have that really weird silicone primer feel like Benefit Professional. And I just, I think it feels gross. It feels like my pores are clogging by the second when I apply something like that. So I would love to see tinted sunscreens that just have more of a natural dry down. They just kind of absorb nicely into your skin. They're not overly shiny. They're not overly dry just somewhere in the middle. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, let's talk about some skincare categories at the drugstore because the drugstore needs work. Not that places like Sephora and Ulta and higher end brands don't, but I feel like the drugstore could do these things easily and they haven't. Okay, I would love to see more cleansing oils at the drugstore. I feel like this is a category that is really, really 
lacking. We definitely have some makeup remover type items that are great. The Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water is one of my all-time favorites. I love that. The CeraVe Hydrating Cream to Foam Cleanser is nice for like lightweight makeup removal, but not heavy duty. I feel like we don't have a ton of amazing options at the drugstore when it comes to cleansing oil specifically, and also cleansing oils that just don't irritate my skin personally that I've tried because there are some, but a lot are very, very fragrant. So one that I love is the Neutrogena Sesame Formula, I think, body oil. I showed you guys that in my nighttime skincare routine. I've brought that up before. That one's great, but I never see that in stores. I have to pick that up on Amazon, and I just, I want to be able to pick something up at the drugstore. I feel like not many brands do this, so that would be amazing. I actually did just recently buy a ton of a ton of Asian skincare cleansing oils based on your guys' recommendations. So I'm gonna do a little showdown video on those. Stay tuned for that. But those are all from YesStyle, not the drugstore. I feel like the same thing goes for exfoliants. We definitely have exfoliants, don't get me wrong, but I feel like almost all of them have very low amounts of active ingredients, which yes, is definitely going to be safer for beginners, but for anybody that is past that beginner level and using exfoliants and needs a higher amount of those active ingredients to really see a noticeable improvement, I feel like that's where we don't have nearly as many options at the drugstore and I would love to see more. A brand that actually jumped on this opportunity recently that I noticed on the shelves is Neutrogena. They now have a few different exfoliants that are in higher than your standard like 3%. I'm being a little shady. There are definitely some 5% options, but even higher than that for ingredients or formulas that are maybe not as likely to irritate the skin, Neutrogena really did it right here. And I'll list those below because those are great. And I'm excited to see more of that at the drugstore this year. The last drugstore category that I want to see, I wouldn't necessarily say more of because we have plenty moisturizers. I just wanna see them step it up with moisturizers. I want formulas that are elevated. I want them to give us more than they're giving us right now. I feel like so many drugstore moisturizers are just not that fun to apply. That's definitely not the case with all of them because you guys know I have so many drugstore moisturizers that I love. How do I say this? But I feel like I'm kind of tapped out on them and it leaves me wanting more. So Cetaphil recently came out with a couple of really nice moisturizers this year. Their Gentle Clear Acne Moisturizer that is so great, lightweight, gel-like, and their Deep Hydration Daily Glow Moisturizer. That one just feels special and elevated compared to other drugstore formulas. Of course, the e.l.f. moisturizers, cream of the crop when it comes to a drugstore formula. I want more of that. So I know brands can do it. I'm waiting. The last skincare category is not specific to the drugstore and it's more of just a personal wish, but I can't be the only one that feels this way. So I would love to see more impressive all-in-one serums because over the past couple of years, we have obviously seen an explosion in brands like The Ordinary, The Inculus, Good Molecules, all of which are predominantly focused on products that have one to two key star ingredients. And while, again, that's really nice for a beginner using skincare or somebody that is really trying to target one of those ingredients, I like having that as an option. But for someone like me who doesn't want to mess with using several different serums all at once and the issues that can happen with that, the pilling, the stickiness, just not feeling great on the skin, and someone that's looking for a lot of those ingredients all in one place to just get more bang for my buck, that's why I want it. So one product from The Ordinary that I am obsessed with that is definitely set apart from the rest of the brand in that sense is their Buffet Plus Copper Peptide Serum. That thing is amazing. I've seen such nice results in my skin ever since I incorporated it into my morning skincare routine. And that has so many great ingredients all in one place that I don't need to mess with a hundred million different serums. So that's not to say that more ingredients is always better. I don't like the way that sentence sounded. That's not to say that more is better. It's just to say that I would rather use one with more than more with one. Okay, let's move on to hair care next. I do have a drugstore specific request first, and that is to see more product availability in categories that are not shampoo and conditioner. This is something that I talked about in a recent video where I ranked a bunch of popular drugstore hair care brands. If you haven't seen that, I will list it below, but there are so many brands that have so many shampoo and conditioner sets, 
but then really not much else when it comes to products like masks and leave-ins and serums and things that are essential for creating a hair care routine. So I would love to see less shampoo and conditioner because it's a little overwhelming and more everything else at the drugstore. And obviously that's not speaking to every single brand at the drugstore, but that's definitely a theme that I have noticed. I feel like I can't super easily build a drugstore hair care routine in the way that I can with higher end products. A category that I would love to see expand this year from all brands, both drugstore and higher end, is the pre-shampoo oil category. I love applying oils before I shampoo my hair all over my lengths and ends. It's such a nice way to not only protect your hair when you're shampooing, but also get amazing shine, helps to detangle. I really love doing that, but I feel like I've only seen a couple of brands really tackle that category. So one I can think of is Bondi Boost. They have a pre-shampoo shower oil. It's just meant to use in that way, I believe if I'm not mistaken, and not as a styling oil because a styling oil, of course, you want to be lighter weight, something that's not going to weigh down the hair, whereas that's not a concern when you're about to shampoo. And the last hair care wish that I have for this year is specific to affordable brands, drugstore brands, and that is to see more legitimate options when it comes to strengthening damaged hair and preventing future breakage. I feel like this was a category that was done very wrong at the drugstore for a really long time. There were a lot of products that said repair damage on the front, but they had no ingredients to warrant those kinds of claims. That I have seen start to change a little bit. So one example is L'Oreal Everpure Bond Strengthening Shampoo and Conditioner. Such a nice set and does have ingredients that make sense with those kinds of claims. Also the SGX NYC, I think I'm saying that right, Hair IQ 10-in-1 Leave-In Treatment. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here thinking of these all off the top of my head, but that is another one that has great ingredients in it and it makes sense as to why they're calling that a damage repair product that prevents future breakage. So while I'm not expecting to see products that really go in there and repair damage that has already happened, I would love to see more products that strengthen damaged hair and prevent that breakage. And I really feel like the drugstore has the potential to make it happen. So I'm gonna put it out there. Okay, let's move on to makeup and then we will do kind of rapid fire your guys' opinion. So for makeup, I just have a few, but I feel very strongly about them. The first is similar to the issue that I have with tinted sunscreen. I would love more natural makeup options that cater to oily skin. Again, it feels like the default for a natural makeup product, whether that is a tinted moisturizer or a cream bronzer or a blush or highlight. Basically anything liquid or cream caters to dry skin. And I'm happy for all of you with dry skin, but I am sad for me as someone who doesn't have dry skin because so many of those products just look way too greasy on me by the end of the day. And it's just not even something I could do. So I would love the option to participate in the natural beauty trend that's been going on for quite some time now. Two, I just feel like I can't really fully embrace it until I have more products that work for my skin. Second is also something that I would like to see in the more natural looking makeup category, and that is skin-like concealer that still gives coverage. It feels like a little bit of an oxymoron to say that, but I, as somebody with dark circles, love a concealer with coverage. I want that, but I don't want it to look heavy and makeup-y and thick. It's really hard to find a concealer that has kind of a skin-like finish that looks more natural, that does actually give you that coverage. One that I discovered recently that immediately made its way into my top makeup favorites of 2021 was the NYX Serum Concealer. That is beautiful and somehow does exactly what I'm talking about. So I wanna see more concealers like that. This is good time for me to reapply this lip oil. I'm wearing the Dior Lip Glow Oil in Rosewood and my request is more lip oils because I love them so, so much with a little bit more pigment for those of us with small lips. So I need a little help in the lip department and I do like a little bit of color but I want there to be a balance between a very opaque, intensely pigmented lipstick and a really, really sheer, barely there kiss of color. Like something in between would be so nice, but I love the lip oil formula so much that I want it in this form. So more of these with just a little bit more color and pigment, that'd be nice. All right, you guys, rapid fire time. What do you think should start and stop in 2022? First, bring back side parts. 
It's not a side part, like I said, it's a hair flip. Second, more shade ranges for tinted moisturizers, BB creams, and CC creams. I completely agree. It's not just a problem with tinted sunscreens. It seems to be a problem with anything that's light in coverage. We just don't have enough shades. Next is brands to have dewy and matte options for the same product. This is genius and I feel like this solves the problem. So yes, I want more natural finish tinted sunscreens, but you could take some of the tinted sunscreens that already exist and are very, very much so catered towards dry skin types like the Super Goop Glow Screen. Um, probably gonna wanna avoid that if you're incredibly oily. Do something like that and then make a more natural matte option for oily skin. I love this idea. And then next, same kind of idea is more light coverage makeup products that cater towards oily skin. Someone said, why are they all dewy? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. And for things that you guys have had enough of, so many of you said eyelash extensions, which I find interesting because it didn't even cross my mind, but like this clearly is a group pain. I've never had them, so I can't speak to personal experience and I don't believe any of my friends have them, so maybe I just don't notice them in my everyday life. What's the common issue with lash extensions? It's happened in 2021. Did they go crazy? I clearly miss that. I feel like they can be done really well, but I definitely have seen lash extensions that are just a lot. However, they're not my lashes and some people might love that look, so you know? Do you? Overlined lips was another very popular theme. You guys are over the overlined lips. And I have to say that for myself, I agree. I don't think it looks good on me. I think it just looks like I've overlined my lips and I need to stop, you know, like you can really tell. Whereas other people, I feel like it's a lot more subtle. I don't know. My lip shape just doesn't suit it. And a lot of you said soapy, bushy, feathered brows. I don't have eyebrows naturally, so I would love to be able to feather my brows, but I've just felt left out over the past couple of years, a lot. Next was requiring labels with active percentages at CeraVe's retinol with the eyes. Yeah, I kind of agree here. I feel like if there is a product that has an active ingredient that is disclosed commonly elsewhere, but the brand is not disclosing it, that just makes me not want to pick that product because I don't know how much of that ingredient is in it. And if I know that I'm seeing good results with a disclosed amount elsewhere, I'll stick with that. And then I don't want to switch if I don't know. Does that make sense? Like more just for a benchmark comparison purposes. Sunscreen gate, Korean and Japanese sunscreen brands should be trusted again. Yes, I agree. I don't think it's fair to just write off all Korean and Japanese sunscreens based on the bad behavior of some. And last is overpriced celebrity products that aren't worth the hype. I don't know if I've ever tried a celebrity skincare or hair care product, have I? I don't think so. I just do not buy into that whatsoever. So again, I'm probably not the right target audience to speak on that, but yeah, I mean, that's not to say I wouldn't try some. If there are celebrity brands you guys are interested in, let me know. But I feel like I just don't have a personal interest in celebrity brands. All right, you guys. And with that, we have made it to the end of this video. I feel like this is going to be a longer one. I may have to cut some things back so it's not an hour long. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun hanging out with me. And I hope you enjoyed the different style of video. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do more commentary style videos like this because I would love to. I think it's really fun. So what else? Give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell. Send my channel to a friend. All of those things really help to support me. So thank you so much for doing all of them. Stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.